This week in Droneland, Holy Stone drones are falling out of the sky thanks to a security flaw. We've got another week about the DJI RC Pro 2, and researchers at UC Berkeley have made the world's smallest drone, and it flies without a battery, because why not? Welcome back to Weekly Drone News, your weekly dose of drone news, and it's been a bit of an odd week. And for once, DJI is not hogging all the attention, although we still have some leaks, of course. We've got security scares, palm-sized drones, and some tech that's so small that it looks just like sci-fi. My name's Ian, and this is Drone News. Big news if you own a DJI Mini 4 Pro, it can now be used for mapping. That's right, this tiny drone just got a big upgrade. DJI dropped the mobile SDK version 5, which unlocks third-party app access like Glitchy or Drone Deploy or Spexy. This means automated flight missions can use custom waypoints and precision mapping in a drone that fits in the palm of your hand. It's not bad. A quick note, this only works if you use the DJI RC N2 controller, so the one that comes without a screen. The RC2, not supported. Maybe never. DJI also extended this SDK to support the Matrice 4D and 4TD, which are industrial drones out there with thermal cameras. That's awesome. Litchi has already teased software support coming soon for these drones. We've got a full podcast diving into drone mapping that you want to go and check out. The link is going to be down in the description below. DJI's next big battery brick just hit the FCC database. It looks like there's now a Power 2000 coming to the market. FCC filings don't really give much away. It's just a name and a few details about any wireless capabilities. But based on the category, we're expecting this big battery to have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth monitoring capability, probably through like a mobile app. Capacity wise, it sounds like it's gonna have around 2000 watt hours, hence the 2000 name, which is a bump up from the Power 1000. Number goes up. Great news if you're into van life, off-grid work, or you just wanna have electricity hoarding in the back of your van all the time. It's tariff free. DJI has been inching into the portable power space since last year. The Power 500 and 1000 did well, especially with drone users and campers that need to be perpetually online even in the middle of the woods. If you fly drones in Canada, heads up. Transport Canada just released last week new drone regulations. They especially impact micro drone operators already if you want to fly at advertised events. So as of April 1st, micro drone operators need to get an SFOC to fly at an advertised event. We've got a full breakdown on the channel here already. Go check that video out and you're going to find out if the rules are going to apply to you or if you want to upgrade to the new level one complex certification that's coming later this year. Holy Stone drones, cheap, cheerful, and now completely compromised. Researchers at Florida Tech uncovered serious security flaws in several Holy Stone models. It turns out that the HS720 and the HS175D have both open Telnet ports. Remember Telnet, Cam? No. <laughs> no one remembers Telnet. That's from the 80s. That means anyone with a bit of know-how or is bored in the 80s like me can hijack your drone mid-flight. The HS175D also lets attackers tap into your live video feed and it can even bypass authentication checks. If that wasn't enough, multiple models are vulnerable to a ping of death, which is like a denial of service. A simple network overload and boom, your drone's gonna drop from the sky. Not a bug, not a glitch, a full on face plant. So the moral of the story, cheap doesn't always mean cheerful, especially when your drone becomes someone else's toy. Meanwhile, over on Reddit, Estonia Skycam shared a slick FPV fly-through of a sneaker store. Shot on a Beta FPV Beta 95X with a naked GoPro, this 30-second one-take shows off a new retail space with tight gaps, smooth motion, and just the right amount of streetwear swagger. It ends with the drone falling into a shoebox because... Of course it does. Cool concept, clean execution. We've done one of these ourselves, of course, but maybe not this good. And it takes a lot of planning, some serious struggle to get it organized. If you're thinking about getting into FPV, we've got a podcast episodes, multiple, that walk you through everything you need to know from gear to flight skills. Check it out, links down below. It wouldn't be another week if there weren't leaks about the Mavic 4 Pro and the RC2 and they just keep on rolling in. So the new RC Pro 2, rumored to be out soon, seems to pack a seven inch touchscreen, a fresh joystick design, and what might be a control wheel on the left side. We're not entirely sure yet, but it's clearly going to be different from what we've had before. Even the box art for the Mavic 4 Pro is leaked now, which usually means we're getting really close to launch, or DJI is just trolling us, of course. It seems to be that there's now a visible vision sensor under the left propeller, 
people, which is possibly infrared and more likely probably LiDAR based on what we've seen in the Air 3S and the Flip that just came out recently too. Also, there's now rubber landing pads under the drone. It's the same idea as the Mini 3 Pro, just enough to keep your camera from getting into the dirt. So rumor right now is we're looking at an April 24th launch, but a DJI dealer in China says it may slip to May. Honestly, it's not really a big delay if it's true, like, gives you more time to save some pennies to get ready for this thing. In the meantime, drones 19170668 on X made a camera rotation mock-up. The DJI Flip just got a bump in firmware. Version 0.00.1200 brings bug fixes and, well, supposedly better performance. DJI didn't specify what better means, but hey, we'll take it, it's an upgrade. Heads up though, the update resets all your camera settings. Ask me how I personally know this. So adjust everything before takeoff, after you've updated your firmware settings. UC Berkeley's researchers have built the world's smallest drone and it doesn't even need a battery. It weighs just 21 milligrams, which is about the third of the weight of a honeybee, and it's less than a centimeter in diameter. So how does it fly? Magnetic fields. Two magnets spin to generate lift and provide control. There's no wires, there's no sensors, no batteries, just physics and science. The use cases, well, artificial pollination, environmental monitoring, and navigating tight spots like pipes or vents, espionage, probably, unfortunately, probably not FPV tours or fly throughs though. And in the future, we could see swarms of these things. That's not terrifying at all. Like a cloud of robot gnats doing your bidding. Freefly has launched a drone called Sun. Real subtle. It's a flying source that pumps out 300,000 lumens of light. It's perfect for lighting up massive areas, search and rescue crews, construction sites, film sets, you name it. Airflow from the props is gonna keep it cool. And if you tether it with a power source, it can run for days quietly. The models, there's the 500, which is $49,000 US, and then the 1000, which is $59,000 US. So good value by upgrading. This episode is brought to you by us, Coastal Drone Co. If you're thinking about buying a new drone, you probably need to get some sort of drone pilot certificate. And we've trained nearly 20,000 pilots in getting theirs across Canada and North America. So whether it's basic, advanced, or now the level one complex certification, we've got you covered both online and in person. So whether you're flying for fun or for work, we'll help you do it legally and confidently. You can check out more information about our online courses in the links below. Amazon drone delivery is back, at least in Texas and in Arizona. Operations were paused in January after a dusty sensor caused some issues. No crashes, no drama, just a precautionary pause. Now the FAA has signed off on their fix and Prime Air says that customer demand is unprecedented. Sure, it's still limited to a few test zones, but it's a step forward, especially after past setbacks like the Lockford shutdown and a few unplanned landings. The bottom line, drone delivery is getting real. And yeah, of course we have a podcast about drone delivery and what it could look like in Canada. So go check it out. That's it for this week. Catch our podcast this Sunday. We're covering what to do if you have a run-in with a bystander while flying. Not running into the bystander, but running into a bystander and having them run at you and ask you questions. And if you missed last week's episode, we shared everything you need to know about getting ready to pass your Canadian Advanced Flight Review and how to avoid common mistakes that we see over and over again. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time on Weekly Drone News. Thanks for watching.